<laughs> Welcome back to Whiskey Bondage. I'm Conrad. Today we're going to talk about, I want to start a whiskey collection. And I've got $100. How do you put together a whiskey collection with $100? Well, I'm going to show you how you can do five bottles. I happen to have 10 or 11 here, but we'll get into that later. I'm going to show you how to turn this into a five bottle whiskey collection. Stick around. All right, so where'd my hundred dollars go? Okay, so I've got a hundred dollars and I'm gonna try and start a whiskey collection. In my mind, you gotta have bourbon, you gotta have Irish, you gotta have scotch, maybe some wheat, maybe some rye. There's a lot out there. That's part of the problem. So can you build a complete round the world whiskey collection for a hundred bucks? Probably not, but I'm gonna give you a pretty good set of bottles you can get. I'm gonna give you five. I'm gonna give you exactly how much I paid for them and what it adds up to. And we're gonna cover some bases right now. So let's start with Irish. I'm gonna start with Irish because Irish for me is a no brainer. For me, there's only one Irish budget whiskey. Now, are you with me if I'm wrong? Put it in the comments. I know there are a lot of other choices, but for me, it's Jameson. It's Jameson, it's only Jameson. I only want on the list, I don't have an alternative for. It's Jameson, 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 and Jameson. Why? Well, for one, I, like a lot of you, cut my teeth in whiskey on Jameson. Jameson is just so easy to drink. It's smooth, it's sweet, you can drink it neat, you can drink it iced. I almost always drink it iced. It's so familiar, it's so comforting, and I get it for $20, $19.99. Really hard to beat. So. Irish. Right next to Ireland, you got to go scotch. So you got a lot of choices with scotch. And the problem with scotch is there's a lot of different varieties of scotch. There's smoky eyeless. There's sweet, and light. There's blended. There's single malts. There's aged. But we only got $100 to spend. So what do you get for $100? My choice, Johnny Walker Black. Now, easy, easy. Don't don't crucify me just yet. I know that Johnny Walker is super common and honestly, it's kind of played, but when's the last time you drank it? Right? Regular old Johnny Walker Black is actually pretty good. And the difference between Johnny Walker Black and Jameson is this has got a little bit of that smokiness that I think you really want to get in a scotch. I mean, if I'm drinking scotch, personally, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Especially if I'm switching and I want something different than an iris. So Johnny Walker Black. Why not double black or red or one of the other ones? Well, I think this one falls in the perfect price point. Red is cheaper, but to me is not that good. This is actually aged a little bit and you can definitely taste the difference. Of course, if you go up to double black or green or gold or whatever, they get a little better. But I paid $28 for this bottle. That's pretty cheap significantly less than most of your Johnny Walker offerings. I mean, for instance, a blue is 200 bucks. A um, little more than red, but better. So Johnny Walker Black. Now, this is where it gets a little complicated. When you get into whiskey and you starting to get into bourbons, that's where I think it goes ham. There are so many choices. So my choice, again, settle down. My choice for bourbon has got to be Buffalo Trace. Look, I know, easy pick. Maybe it's not super original, but I'm trying to come up with five whiskeys you can get for $100. Get off my back, all right? I get this for $20. Don't worry, I got an alternative for this because I know that the one problem with this is is you can't get it everywhere all the time. I have an easy time here in Northern California. But I do realize that in some parts of the country, some of the time, you can't get it for $20 or you can't get it at all. Okay, I get it. I'll get back to you. Don't worry. Stick around until the end of the video and I will tell you exactly where I get Buffalo Trace and exactly what I paid for it. Okay, so that's three. The other thing I think you need, I think you need a rye. Okay, why? I need a rye because one, I think it's the right whiskey for old fashions. Again, you don't agree with me, put it in the comments. We can duke it out all day long. It's part of what I love about the whiskey community. We can have conversations about this stuff. But for me, a traditional old fashioned needs a rye. And a rye needs to be Old Forester 100. Okay, why Old Forester 100? 
Well, for one, I paid $23 for this. $23 for a 100 proof rye by a company like Old Forester? How are you gonna beat that? I mean, give me, give me an option. Show me what's better. I mean, really, you can see I use this one quite a bit, but you can drink this neat and you get that characteristic rye spice or at $23, you can mix it with everything. Hell, you can mix a drink, not like it and dump it down the sink and you're not out that much. It's $23. Okay, so the last thing that I think you need personally, and we're not going Japanese because I haven't really gotten into Japanese a ton. And personally, my opinion, Japanese is scotch. If you don't agree, you know what to do. The other category I think you need is, is weeded bourbon. I mean, we've all heard of the Wellers, but that's what everybody chases anyway. But I like Maker's. I mean, I think Maker's Mark is is a great value for the money. I think it's a really good product. It's easy to find absolutely everywhere. It's always inexpensive. So you're gonna have to <clears throat> bear with me on this because this is a cask strength. This is not something you can get in the $100 list, but ignore that for a minute. That's what the bottle looks like. Regular old maker's mark in the bottle. It looks like this standard strength. So the standard 80 proof is $23. Put that right there. So you've got an Irish, a Scotch, a bourbon, a rye, and a weeded bourbon. And the total on those, what I paid, is $114. I know it's not a hundred bucks, but I mean, shoot me. It's freaking close, right? I mean, if you got a hundred, you got 114. And you got five really solid, a lot of variety, It'll get you some tastings of a lot of different things and you can grow from there. So there's my five whiskeys for $114. So I promised alternatives because I kind of think you need some alternatives because you never know. Maybe you can't find everything on here. So what's my alternative for Jameson? More Jameson. There's no alternative for Jameson. Just buy Jameson. Sorry, it's my opinion. Alternative for Johnny Walker. Now I've got a little tiny bottle of this because honestly, uh, I, I like this stuff but I don't buy it that often because I tend to go with other things or up to the next in the line of this. But Glen Morangi, that is how you say it. Glen Morangi 10 year. Yeah, looks like this one, much bigger. So a Glen Morangi 10 year could be an alternative to the Johnny Walker. Uh, it's not smoky, but it is a scotch. Uh, it's easy to find. It's inexpensive. Instead of $28 for the, for the Johnny Walker, it's $30 for Glen Morangi. So it's gonna add a couple more bucks, but typically pleasant. I don't think I've ever spoke to anybody that doesn't like it. You know, it's it's kind of a beginner experience because it's not super duper complex, but you know, it's good stuff. It's a solid, it's a solid tenure. Yeah, I mean that's that's just a really good scotch uh, for for really inexpensive and super easy to find. So. Alternative to makers, I didn't really have an alternative to makers because I know there are other weeded bourbons out there, but you don't really need an alternative to this. I mean, it's $23, you can find it everywhere, non-cask strength. You can find it everywhere, so you don't really need an alternative to this. I mean, I love Wellers, but you can see, I got a bottle of Wellers Special Reserve here. I don't know if you can see that. Wellers is awesome. And if you can get it for what it's supposed to cost, it's not too far out of the out of the list here. It is a little more expensive, but I know that that's a real challenge for a lot of people, so I didn't put it in the list as an alternative, but you could do that. I do have a good alternative for Buffalo Trace, though. I know that Buffalo Trace can be a little difficult sometimes, so what I've got for you is Old Granddad 114. So you see a lot of Old Granddad 114 on the YouTube, and there's a good reason for it. Old Granddad, I paid $25 for this. Uh, it's got really solid uh, bourbon notes in it. It's actually a higher proof at 114 than the Buffalo Trace at 90. The only reason I picked the Buffalo Trace over the Old Granddad is for me, one, it's less expensive. And two, even though most of the time higher proof is better, not always. I actually find the Buffalo Trace really nice to drink. I like it iced. I like it neat. It's just super well-rounded. Uh, it's easy to drink whether you whether you feel like getting something hot, hotter and punchier or not. But if you can't find it, you cannot go wrong with this. Okay, it's just really cool too. I mean, the size of the cork on that, I mean, 
I don't know if in corks bigger is better or not, but it is cool. So that's your alternative to that. So what's the alternative to rye? I don't think you really need an alternative to Old Forester rye because it should be pretty easy to find and pretty inexpensive. But if you want an alternative or you want to throw something else in there, I really like this one. This is High West's Double Rye. Okay, one really freaking cool bottles. They, you can see that, I don't think you can see them or not. They blow the glass and there's air bubbles in them. And it's pretty inexpensive. I mean, this is a double rye. This is uh, $28 what I paid for that one. So it's a little bit more than the Old Forester, but really cool bottle, really cool presentation, really solid flavors, uh, and a good alternative for uh, the Old Forester. It's a little lower proof at 92, so it's not quite as punchy, but you know, when you get that big rye spice, you don't necessarily need the proof. Um, I just think the proof holds up pretty well to drinks, but it's not like this is a you know an 80 proof rye or something, so it's in there. So if you throw in the substitutions, because you can't find them, my $114 becomes $138. So again, little farther up there, but I don't know. Buy four, leave the, 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 the fifth one off for next time or something. I don't know. I do have to mention before we wrap this up here. Uh, there are two uh, alternative bottles that I wanted to, to, to bring out only because I told you I had 11. So five, six, seven, eight. okay, I got 10. So I told you I had more than five bottles. I want to throw two in there that are inexpensive, but I think are really up in the game on your experience from what we have here, specifically in bourbons. And I just want to call, kind of throw these in as curveballs. There are two, okay? Eagle Rare, Russell's Reserve 10 year. So you can and should be able to find these each for about $40, okay? I know that the Eagle Rare can be a bit of an exception sometime. Please don't shoot me. And if you cannot find it, go for the Russell's 10, okay? The reason I wanted to throw these two in is because these are both really, really nice 10-year uh, aged bourbons, reasonable priced. I mean, it's really difficult. For me, these are pretty similar caliber as far as what you get for the money if you can get them for the $40. The rest of should be no problem. You should find this for $40 all day long. Eagle Rare can be a little bit tougher, but it can be done. I find these, and if you can find it, that's going to that's gonna up your price a little bit on your list. But... These are going to be suitable for even a very experienced bourbon drinker and something that I would consider a maybe second step as you're moving up in your experience in whiskey and in your journey. So if you see these, pick them up. Okay. Can't, can't go wrong. So there you have it. There is your five, I mean 10, I mean five bourbons that you can get for a hundred dollar bill. Uh, and get headed down the biscuit journey build your build your your collection uh you know you can go from there i mean the five the five selection here that i that i put out there is going to give you a really good idea of what you like and what directions you can go you know if you like the the irish uh, the jameson you can go down that irish avenue i find that you'll see kind of a consistent experience as you move along irish or move along scotch or move along bourbon and you really start to notice notes and recognize things that you like or don't like and and you can can go in those directions the next thing you know you got a lot of bourbon or a lot of whiskey that you really really like uh, and you have a collection just like that i mean you don't have to go out and buy uh, 50 bottles of whiskey you start with five and then you get six and then you get 10 and then you get 12 and then your wife starts getting mad at you because you don't have any place to store any of it and it just becomes a whole thing. But anyway, let's see what I'm going to do. Okay. There are two. Is. Two is court popping. Oh, a good one. Let's try. Oh, well, those are screw tops. Screw tops is something you get for cheaper bottles. Oh, that's a low pitched one. I like that one. Anyway. Stick around, please like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me if you got a YouTube channel about whiskey. Uh, hit me up. Let's uh, let's trade off. Uh, I want to see what you've got to say. Uh, maybe post a video in argument to this. What do you think your five bottles are for a hundred dollars? Take that as a challenge. It's not easy to do. Or check me out on Instagram at whiskey bonded. Uh, doing some things over there, having some fun. Uh, probably gonna start doing some giveaways pretty soon. Uh, that looks like a lot of fun to do. I'd love to do that. Maybe give back to the whiskey community a little bit. If you've got one that I should have put on this list, let me know what it is. Until next time, I'm Conrad from Whiskey Bonded. Cheers.
Okay, so I promised you in the video that I would show you exactly how much and where I got this Buffalo Trace for. I know I said it was $20, but I got this. I'm gonna see if you can see this because it's kind of difficult. If you can actually see that. But I bought this at Sam's Club for $18.98. So if you don't have a Sam's Club membership and you're in California, I might want to get on that. I don't know, maybe. I guess everything's relative. So, hey, you can get five five bottles of whiskey for $100, or you can get one bottle of Eagle Rare. Uh, I mean, who am I kidding? I'd probably buy the bottle of Eagle Rare. But you shouldn't buy the bottle of Eagle Rare for $100. You should buy the other five bottles and try those out. But if you see Eagle Rare and it's $40, it's a no-brainer. A little bossing. It's got the, the extra large cork, which is really kind of unique. And uh, I appreciate all you guys' support. And until next time, I don't have a glass. Guess it's going to have to do. Cheers. pretty good. I can't remember why I said I didn't have a bottle of that. I need to go out and get a bottle of that. I need to get a bottle of Glenmorangi 10. Yeah.